Hello, my name is Phil Pereira, and I'm the Emergency Ultrasound Coordinator at the New York Presbyterian Hospital in New York City, and welcome to Soundbites Cases. In this module, we'll continue our journey looking specifically at the cardiac echo views of the heart. In this module, we're going to focus entirely on the peristernal short axis view of the heart. Now, we've covered the peristernal long axis view of the heart previously in Soundbites module, and recall that the probe will be positioned for the peristernal views in position A, as shown here in the pictorial to the right. In upcoming segments, we'll cover the subxiphoid view, as shown in probe position B, and finally the apical view of the heart, as shown here in probe position C. Now, the peristernal short axis view of the heart can be very helpful in emergency care as it gives a great deal of information about the contractility of our patient's heart. So let's look now further into how to perform this examination. The probe will be placed just left of the sternum at about intercostal space 3 or 4, as shown in the pictorial here to the right. Now, in variance to the peristernal long axis view of the heart, where the probe marker was positioned down towards the patient's left elbow, we'll swivel the probe 90 degrees clockwise, so now the marker is down towards the patient's right hip. That's with the caveat that the ultrasound screen indicator is positioned towards the left of the screen. Now, moving the patient into left lateral decubitus position may help imaging from the peristernal short axis plane. Here's what the views from the peristernal short axis plane of the heart will look like. We see a pictorial here to the left, showing the left ventricle cut in cross section as a cylinder, and the right ventricle as a little sliver just to the left of the left ventricle. We see an ultrasound image corresponding to the right, and note the left ventricle again, that cylinder cut in cross section, and the right ventricle above the left ventricle more anteriorly and to the left. In this way, we get a good sense of the overall cylinder of the left ventricle and can gauge its contractility. Here's a video clip showing excellent contractility of the left ventricle as taken from the peristernal short axis plane, and note the muscular contractions of the left ventricle as a cylinder squeezing in dramatically during systole. We also note the mitral valve flipping up and down within the left ventricle, and the right ventricle as seen up and above the left ventricle. Now let's contrast this video clip showing excellent contractility with another patient who had an advanced cardiomyopathy. Note again the left ventricle and note here the poor percentage change from diastole through systole, indicating an advanced cardiomyopathy with low ejection fraction. We can also see the right ventricle anterior to the left ventricle. For learning purposes, we'll identify the walls of the LV, the septum in between the ventricles, the anterior wall to the top of the screen, posterior wall to the back, and the lateral wall as shown here towards the right portion of the screen. Now while I show the walls of the left ventricle here, it's important to realize that the goal of emergency echo at the bedside is to determine overall left ventricular contractility rather than looking for segmental wall motion abnormalities. So in conclusion, the peristernal short axis view of the heart gives a great deal of information about the contractility of the left ventricle. This will allow you to identify patients who may have a cardiogenic cause for their presentation. So I hope to see you back as Soundbites continues and we move on to discuss the subxiphoid views and apical views of the heart.